I was born Nathan, although for as long as I can remember, I have been known as Nat. Apparently when I was very young and learning to talk, I found my name a little too long and difficult to say out loud, so I shortened it as much as I could. Naturally I had it pointed out to me many times during my childhood that Nat was more of a girl's name, but that never bothered me, so the name stuck with me. I was an average kid for the most part, average height, average weight and average school grades, but I had a positive outlook on life and always tried my best to be nice to the people around me. Throughout my childhood I lived at home with my mom, dad and my older sister, Anna. We have always been a close family and remain so today. Growing up we lived in a nice area and thanks to my hard-working father we were always been comfortable for money. I guess the only slight oddity in our family life was that mom and dad didn't get married until as recently as five years ago, when I was 17 and Anna was 19. They always said they had other priorities in their lives, such as raising their children, but when it finally came to the big day, they spared no expense on a beautiful ceremony and lavish celebration for all our friends and family. A photograph of my mom on her wedding day, sitting on the bench surrounded by flowers in our back garden still takes pride of place in the front room. Things were good growing up. Despite the two-year age gap with my sister we were often mistaken for twins, we shared the same strawberry blonde hair color and people said we had the same smile. We had a lot in common, but plenty of differences too. Our parents trusted us not to destroy the place in their absence so would occasionally leave us behind on weekend trips away. I had a close-knit group of friends who I often would kick a ball around a park with, and from the age of 16 I also had a girlfriend, Kelly. It's safe to say that Kelly was a bit alternative when it came to her outlook on life, and also her dress sense. She was open and honest and didn't care what people thought or said about her, which I was slightly envious of. I was a little more traditional in my outlook and dress sense, but despite this, she fell for me and I quickly fell for her too. We made a slightly odd couple, but somehow it really worked. Today is the fourth anniversary of the best day of my life. It was also, for a short time, the most embarrassing day of my life, but it changed my life in a way I could never have imagined. I was 18, Anna 20, and our parents had gone away for the weekend, visiting friends in the country. Kelly had recently started a part-time job so was working on this particular day and all my friends were mysteriously busy. So whilst I was enjoying a bit of quiet time, I was quickly becoming quite bored watching TV alone in my room. Nat, you there? I could hear my name being shouted from my sister's room next door. Yeah, what? I yelled back. I heard no response. I knew what Anna wanted. She wanted me to get up and go and see her, and to then go and get her a drink from downstairs. She had done this a thousand times before, but I always fell for it. I was weak. Jumping up from my chair I turned off my TV and made the short journey to Anna's room. Pushing the door open slowly, I found her sat in her usual position, on her bed surrounded by pillows, with her feet outstretched in front of her. She was wearing pink jogging pants with a tight white sports top. She was smiling. Hey bro! Anna giggled. Was just wondering if you fancied getting me a drink from downstairs? I would do but I've just painted my toes. She looked up and smiled at me in a way that would make anyone want to get her a drink. Anna was beautiful, but also kind and sweet. I loved her and would do anything for her, although she did annoy me sometimes. So without argument I went down to the kitchen and brought her back a glass of cold water with a pink straw. Thanks Nat! She smiled on my return and took the glass from me, immediately drinking half of it. No probs, I replied. Without invitation I perched myself on the corner of her bed, I wasn't ready to leave just yet, truth be told I was bored so was kind of hoping for some conversation. So what you up to? Watching porn again? Anna giggled. No, God no. I don't do that. I blushed. I was just watching some TV yeah, whatever. Boys will be boys. Anna took another sip of her water. I hate to say it, but it does get pretty boring when mom and dad go away. But at least you're here too, gives me someone to wind up I guess. You not out with Kelly today? No, she's working all day I think. Shame. Looks like you'll have to hang out with me instead then. Yeah, I guess so. 
I forced a smile then allowed myself a moment to gaze around Anna's room. Unlike my own room it was tidy, apart from a few magazines on the floor beside the bed, and some shoes hidden underneath the dressing table. The only other thing on show was a smart-looking skirt, still with the label on, hanging from the handle of the closet. That's nice, is it new? I pointed at the skirt. It was knee-length, dark purple with a black flower stitched into the design. It is new, yes. Quite expensive too, shame it doesn't fit. Anna replied, disappointment clear in her voice. You going to take it back then? Of course, well send it back, I bought it online. They sent me a size too big. Anna paused. I bet it would fit you though. No, don't be silly. I blushed a little so turned away. Course it would, you're only slightly bigger than me. I bet you it would fit you perfectly. Anna jumped up from the bed and picked up the skirt from the hanger. Come on, prove me wrong. No, it's fine, I don't need to prove you right. Oh, come on. I'm not going to tell anyone if that's what you're worried about. You'd do it if Kelly asked you. Yeah, but she wouldn't ask me to do it. Well I guess she does spend most of her time wearing boys' clothes anyway, Anna was teasing but she wasn't too far away from the truth. Come on Nat, it's just a bit of fun. Fine, alright. I had given in. Excellent. Anna giggled with excitement. Now be careful with it, I am sending it back after all. Take your jeans off, and your socks. I stood up from the bed and did as I was told. Throwing my jeans and socks to one side, I carefully stepped into the skirt, which Anna was holding out in front of me. She pulled it up, helped with the fastening and before I knew it, I was wearing a very pretty and very expensive skirt. And to my sister's delight, it did fit me, perfectly. I knew it! Anna squealed. How does it feel? Okay, I guess. I didn't want to sound too enthusiastic. Okay? Just okay? It's gorgeous. You have no idea how jealous I am that it fits you and doesn't fit me. I turned to face the long floor-length mirror which dominated one of the walls of the bedroom, and I couldn't deny the skirt looked great, even if I was just wearing a plain white t-shirt with it. My attention was diverted just long enough for me not to notice Anna go back to the closet and pull out a long-sleeved black silk blouse. Here, put this one. She handed me the blouse. Not, it's fine. The skirt is enough, I think. Come on, Nat, don't be boring. Put the blouse on, it will go with the skirt. It's your size, it'll fit. I still won't tell anyone. Fine. I was still blushing as I took off my t-shirt and threw it onto the pile with my jeans and socks. The blouse was easy enough to put on so only took a few seconds to do up the buttons. Once again, to Anna's delight, it fit me perfectly. Well, look at you. Anna giggled. Will you wear one more thing for me? What? These. Anna quickly bent down and pulled out a pair of strappy heeled wedges from underneath her dressing table. I smiled. I had given in arguing, what difference would some shoes make at this point now anyway? I sat down on the bed again and one by one slipped my feet into the shoes. Annoyingly, they also fit me like a glove. I had no idea I was the same shoe size as my sister, but apparently I was. I stood up and turned back to the mirror. I felt instantly taller of course, but somehow the skirt now fit even me better than it did before, the way it hung and caressed my legs at the slightest moment was perfect. A small shiver ran down my spine as I realized how good I felt wearing the clothes and the shoes. Oh my god! Anna could hardly contain herself. Nat, you look amazing. If I were to do your hair and makeup, you'd totally pass as a girl. How do you feel? I had no reply, there were no words. Half of me wanted to take the clothes off again and go hide in my room, pretending none of this had ever happened. But the other half wanted to stay like this a little bit longer. So this is your first time dressed as a woman, huh? Anna stood behind me and put her hands on my hips, running them down the soft fabric of my skirt. Again, I had no words, all I could do is smile, awkwardly. Hey, can I take your photo? Anna grabbed her prone from beside her bed. 
I promise I won't send it to anyone, I just think it's really cool what you've done, so it would be nice to remember it later. Only if you promise you won't blackmail me with it later or something? I promise. Now go stand over there by the closet I did as I was told once again and headed over to the closet to have my photo taken. As I began to walk I had almost forgotten I was wearing heels, but they didn't seem to slow me down at all, in fact after the first few steps they started to feel quite comfortable. This time, despite the nagging doubt of what my sister was going to do with the photo once it had been taken, the smile was genuine. Beautiful! Anna smiled as she briefly showed the phone to me so I could see the picture. Okay, well you've had your fun now, you can have your skirt back. Unless. Anna smirked. Unless what? I had already sat down and was starting to take off my shoes. Unless you want to try on something else? I mean I have some dresses which would look great on you, it's only recently I dropped a size so there's loads in my closet which would fit you. What do you say? Just for a bit of fun. I thought to myself for a few seconds. I couldn't deny wearing the skirt and blouse had been quite enjoyable, even just for this short time. What harm would it be to try on one more thing? You promise you won't tell anyone? I don't want this getting out, not to mom or Kelly or anyone, it'll be out little secret. I could see Anna's excitement building. Okay. I'll try on one dress, I couldn't believe I had actually agreed to it, but as usual I found it almost impossible to say no to her. Anna let out a little shriek of joy and skipped over to her closet to pick out a dress for me to wear. It didn't take Anna long to choose a dress for me, but when she pulled it out to show me, I was taken aback. It wasn't the dress I was expecting her to choose. Wow. You sure you want me to wear that one? It's your prom dress. Yes. Anna interrupted. I adore this dress, reminds me of an incredible night. I've only worn it the once of course. I'd love to see you in it. With all this lace at the back it'll fit almost anyone. Okay, if you don't mind, the dress was stunning, a deep burgundy color, long flowing skirt with a fitted bodice and off-the-shoulder straps. Course not. Come on then, leave the skirt and blouse on the bed, I'll help you into the dress. My heart beat a little faster as I carefully took off the blouse and skirt and prepared myself to put on the dress. What was I doing? How had it come to this? I had only left my room to get Anna a drink and now I was wearing her clothes. Okay, stand still and put your arms in the air. I held my arms up as Anna slipped the dress over my head, pulling it down over my body. Before I knew it she was adjusting the lace at the back and fastening the clasps to secure it in place. I knew I wouldn't be able to take it off quickly, or indeed without Anna's help. Within a few seconds, Anna had finished and I was in the dress. It fit me perfectly, as had everything else I'd tried on today. I was missing a bit of bust of course, but that didn't really seem to matter. Then I turned to see myself in the mirror. Oh my god! I know! How amazing do you feel now? Anna giggled, pausing only to tug on my skirt and the back to spread it out on the floor behind me. I couldn't help but smile too. The dress looked amazing, and so did I. I didn't know what to say. I still didn't want to seem too enthusiastic, it was a bit weird me doing this, but I couldn't deny I was having fun. Things were about to go further though. Okay, don't say anything, let me do your makeup. Before I had time to reply, Anna had taken me by the hand and pulled me over to her dressing table where I carefully sat down, smoothing out my dress as I had seen a thousand women do a thousand times before. I sat still and closed my eyes. I had never worn makeup before so the whole process was new to me. Anna knew what she was doing and kept things simple, as she had done when going to her prom the year before. Within a few minutes she had added foundation, a little blusher, a pale eye shadow, mascara and a burgundy lipstick, I was dying to see myself but she wouldn't let me look just yet. Anna had a couple of more ideas. Running a brush through my hair she clipped it back and pushed into place a sparkly hairband, matched with a pretty necklace and bracelet. She placed a pair of silver strappy heels in front of me and guided my feet into them before adding the final touch with a spray of her favorite perfume. She then took my hand once again and led me back to the long mirror. How do you feel now, prom queen? 
Anna took a step back and admired her work. I was speechless. What she had done with my hair and the makeup had made all the difference. I looked so like a girl it was a little scary. Wow, was all I could manage. I found myself swaying slightly from side to side, even allowing myself half a twirl. I took a few tentative steps in my heels, this was the next level from how I had felt wearing the skirt and blouse. This is so much fun, I can't believe we haven't done this before. You haven't done this before, have you? I mean you seem to know what you're doing in those heels. Anna teased. No, I guess I'm a natural. I said with a smile. And with that comment I had finally let my guard down, I finally let on to Anna that I was enjoying the whole experience. Stand over there again, I want another picture. I couldn't say no so I returned to the same spot as before, in front of the closet, and posed for the camera. Anna took several photos from several angles, I was actually quite looking forward to seeing the results properly later, I was sure Anna would send me copies of them if I asked. You look amazing Nat. How do you feel? Be honest, Anna's comment was genuine. I feel, well, incredible. I mean, who wouldn't feel incredible in a dress like this? You're supposed to feel incredible wearing this dress, right? Right, exactly. Anna gave me a hug. If only mom could see you now, she laughed oh god, can you imagine? I'd just die on the spot if she walked in now, well luckily for you she won't be back for another two days, it's just you and me, sis. Sis? I smiled. I glanced over at the clock beside Anna's bed, it had just passed 3 p.m. So what do we do now? Anna checked the time too. While it's only early, it would be a shame for our girly afternoon to end just yet, I smiled, I didn't need to say anything. It was obvious I wasn't quite ready for this to end yet either. What do you have in mind? How about we take things up a level? Up a level? How do you mean? Is that even possible? I honestly didn't think there was another level to go up to now I had experienced being a prom queen. Oh, it's possible. I have an idea, an almost mischievous look had crossed Anna's face. Come one then, tell me, what's your idea? The suspense was almost killing me, I couldn't wait any longer, I had to know what she was thinking. I want to turn you into a bride. Anna announced, with a huge amount of excitement in her voice. A bride? I was stunned by the suggestion. Yes. There is the most stunning wedding dress hanging up in mom's closet right now, she's not going to wear it anytime soon, so I want you to wear it. I can't, why not? You've come this far, you've worn my prom dress, aren't you now a little bit curious to know what it would be like to wear that big beautiful white gown? Well I guess, a little. But it's mom's dress. So? She doesn't need to know. I won't tell her and as long as you don't spill a can of coke down the front of it, she's never going to find out. Come on, you've come so far already, I've done your makeup, it's just one more quick change. Anna was very persuasive. The more she spoke the more I was coming round to the idea. I couldn't say no, I felt like if I didn't go through with it, I would end up regretting it later. She was right, I had come this far. I turned back to the mirror and stared at myself one more time. I was the prom queen, but suddenly that wasn't enough. Now I wanted to be the bride. Sure, okay. I'll do it. I replied nervously. I was blushing and my heart was beating faster. What had I let myself in for? Oh my god, this is so exciting. Anna gave me another quick hug before spinning me round to unfasten my prom dress. A few moments later she was hanging the dress back up in the closet and I was standing almost naked in the middle of her room. Put this on, quick! She giggled as she threw a red silk robe at me. And you can take those heels off too, and the jewelry, we'll find you something a bit more bridal. I slipped on the robe and carefully removed the jewelry, placing it on the dressing table. I still looked great, thanks mostly to the makeup and the robe, although quite simple in its design, was very feminine too. I sat on the corner of the bed again and waited as Anna rummaged through her drawers, she was clearly looking for something specific. 
She eventually pulled out a shopping bag which had a few things in it and a small white box. She brought them over to me and sat down on the bed next to me. Now, hear me out before you say anything, Anna looked at me, she was still smiling. I was slightly worried about what she was going to propose next. When you wear this next dress, you're going to need something up top, not much, but something. So you'll need to wear this bra. From the shopping bag she handed me a plain white strapless bra. It still had the label attached so it was definitely new. Wah. I didn't know what to say. And I also think you should wear these. You can't wear your own underwear under that gorgeous dress. From the bag Anna then took a pair of cotton white briefs, also with the tag still on. They were simple but pretty, perfect for what I was about to do. Oh, I'm not sure about this. This is getting kinda weird now. I was beginning to have doubts. Weirder than wearing my prom dress and letting me put makeup on you? I'd say all this is still on a par with that. Anna winked. Okay, I guess so. I then thought of a question. Surely if I wear the bra, I'll need something to, you know, put in it? I'm glad you asked. Here, have these, Anna then handed me the small white box. What is it? I asked as I slowly opened it up. Even after revealing the box's contents I still wasn't exactly sure. These are a girl's best kept secret. When we need a bit of a boost in that department, we slip these into our bra. I tend not to have to use them very often anymore, since, well, you know. Anna giggled as she playfully touched her own breasts to prove her point. Wow, I never knew that. I couldn't help but smile. I picked one of Anna's fake breasts up from the box and held it in my hands. My first thought was these are quite realistic, although I then realized I didn't have an awful lot to base this on as the only real breasts I had touched up until that point had been Callie's. Okay then. I suppose if I'm going to do this, I might as well do it properly. I didn't admit it out loud but I was now actually quite curious to see myself with a bit of added bust. Excellent! Anna squealed. I stood up from the bed, and without waiting for any further instruction, I turned away from Anna and under the slight privacy of the robe, I changed from my own boy underwear into the clean white briefs. They fit me well and everything was tucked away neatly inside, with no chance of any embarrassing escape. Perfect! Anna responded as I turned around to face her again. Now, the bra. You might need me to help you with this one. Take off your robe. I did as I was told and stood still as my sister wrapped the strapless bra around me and fastened the clasp securely. She then reached for the white box and one by one added her enhancers, or whatever they were called, she never actually told me, into my bra, giving me the boost that I needed. I was convinced the bra would just fall down without having a strap, but it didn't, instead it gave me a very convincing and surprisingly generous cleavage. I couldn't help but briefly cut my new breasts with my hands, Anna saw this and laughed. Amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I couldn't help but laugh. This was an utterly bizarre situation I was in, but I knew it was going to get even more bizarre next. I think Madam is ready to see the dress. Do come this way. I grabbed the robe and put it back on, before following Anna out of her bedroom and into our parents' room. It was, as you'd expect, the largest of the bedrooms in the house and as my mom was a bit of a clean freak, it was immaculately tidy. Their closet was huge, partly because it housed both hers and my dad's clothes too, but mostly because mom really liked to buy clothes and rarely threw any of them away. Okay, take a seat, I'll get the dress out for you. Anna pointed to the chair beside the bed and headed for the closet. I sat down and crossed my legs, my heart began to beat a little faster with the anticipation of seeing the dress. I had seen it before of course, I was very much a part of my parents' wedding the year before, and with the half dozen or so wedding pictures on display throughout the house, I was never in much danger of forgetting what it looked like. I never expected I'd ever get as close to the dress as I was about to right now though. I waited quietly and patiently as Anna disappeared behind the large closet door, I could hear her gasp and then squeal to herself as she located the dress. A few seconds later she was carefully stepping backwards towards me, carrying the dress, which was in a huge white protective bag. 
She lay it down on the bed and unzipped the bag, quickly moving it to one side. And there it was, in all its glory. My mom's beautiful wedding dress. Oh my god, oh my god. I can't believe you're going to wear this. Anna couldn't hide her excitement, I can't believe I'm going to wear this. I got up from the chair and stood next to my sister at the foot of the bed. Neither of us spoke again for well over a minute as we admired the dress. It's a cliché to say it, but the dress really was fit for a princess. Mom had told everyone before the wedding that she was planning on wearing a modern-day version of Princess Diana's wedding dress, and she certainly delivered on her promise. The skirt was huge, layer upon layer of exquisite tulle, the bodice was fitted, strapless and sparkled in the sunlight. Anna disappeared for a moment, she went back to the closet to collect more things. She brought back a large white box containing a veil and a petticoat, a smaller box had in it a tiara, she then picked up some jewelry and a few wedding day keepsakes. Finally she pulled out a shoe box and revealed a pair of white, peep-toe heels. Here you go princess, this is all for you. Anna looked at me and smiled. I didn't know what to say, I was overwhelmed. I had come this far, I couldn't back out now. I didn't want to back out, I just didn't know where to start. Ready? Anna took charge once again. I took a deep breath. Ready? I forced a smile, but I was nervous. As much as I love my sister, I knew what she was capable of and part of me still thought this was some kind of trick to embarrass me. But trick or not, I was about to experience something amazing. I'm not sure exactly how much time passed, but over the course of the next 20 minutes or so I was the subject of the most incredible transformation. It's what every little girl dreams of I'm sure, being helped into the most beautiful dress, with the most fabulous accessories and the perfect pair of shoes. Being turned into a bride is surely the ultimate makeover, and that's what had just happened to me. A couple of hours ago I was a teenage boy watching TV in my bedroom, now I was Cinderella, on her wedding day. Okay, don't look yet, turn this way. Anna hadn't finished with me yet, I was in the dress and the heels but she didn't want me to see myself in the mirror until the makeover was complete. Close your eyes, I just want to touch up your makeup slightly I did as I was told and felt a sweep of a large soft brush over my cheeks, a smaller brush lightly dust my eyelids and then a gentle swipe of a lipstick glide across my lips. Anna then pushed a couple of slides into my hair and attached the veil, allowing it to fall down my back, causing a shiver. Next she placed the sparkly tiara on my head and secured it into place. Finally, she put a simple silver bracelet around my left wrist and allowed it settle. Am I ready now? I asked. I was dying to see myself. Almost, just a couple more things. Now, I'll be back in 30 seconds, keep your eyes closed, alright? Anna left my side for just a moment, dashing out of the room and back to her own bedroom. She returned carrying a small pendant on a silver chain. She carefully fastened it around my neck and whispered in my ear, this is your something old. My something old? I opened my eyes and took hold of the pendant between my fingers. Yes, this is Nana's necklace. She gave it to me just before she died. There was a hint of a tear in Anna's eye as she spoke, but she managed to hold it back. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you. I held out my hand and gave Anna's hand a little squeeze. What about my something new then? I smiled, playfully. Your underwear is new. Yes it is. I paused for a second. Okay, so my something borrowed is the dress, surely? Anna nodded. How about my something blue? Well I did have something in mind for this too, Anna again turned away and picked up a small box from the dressing table. I knew what it was even before she opened it up. It was mom's engagement ring. Oh my god, really? Anna held my hand and slowly pushed the ring up my finger, like I had just accepted her proposal of marriage. The ring was stunning, a royal blue princess cut diamond, set on silver. I held my hand up to admire its beauty, I felt like the luckiest girl in the world. Just one more final thing, hang on. Anna went back to the large box which had taken from the closet. I couldn't think of anything that was missing, everything I imagined a bride would want or need I was already wearing. Here it is. 
Anna passed me a bouquet of flowers, beautiful white roses surrounded by an arrangement of other pastel colors, peaches, pinks and green. This is beautiful. But how have they survived this long? Surely the flowers would have spoiled. Mom had a replica of her bouquet made, it's what brides do nowadays apparently. Her wedding day bouquet was real, this is her keepsake. But you'd never know the difference, right? They fooled me. I giggled. They're perfect though, thank you. Right, princess, I think we're done. Are you ready? Anna made space in the room for my journey to the mirror and turned back to face me. Yes. I replied, nervously. This was it, the moment I had been waiting for. I was about to see myself as a bride for the very first time. Holding the bouquet in one hand I picked up a corner of my dress with the other and made a careful and tentative first step. It was only a few feet away from me, but time almost stood still as I made my way across the room to the mirror. Then I saw myself. Oh my god! I almost dropped the bouquet. I couldn't believe it was me. I looked incredible. I was a woman, a beautiful bride, it was scary how much I looked like my mom. Anna didn't say anything to begin with, instead she just stood back and watched me. It was almost too much to take in, there was so much to look at in my reflection. My flawless makeup made my face so soft and feminine, my hair was just fabulous, the tiara and veil were just stunning and the jewelry complemented everything perfectly, the ring itself was fit for a queen. But of course the thing I loved the most was the dress. I found myself gently swaying my hips, occasionally twirling, even curtsying. The way the huge skirt rustled as it glided from side to side, only to fall effortlessly back into place when I became still again, was an absolute joy. The countless layers of tulle were so soft and delicate to touch, and the petticoat I was wearing underneath just seemed to amplify everything, it added more volume, more movement and created an even more intense feeling of femininity. As with everything else I had worn today, the dress seemed to fit me perfectly. While the skirt was big and poofy, the bodice was fitted, tight and confined. It gave my body the most wonderful and elegant shape, and as the sunlight peeped through the window, it glistened every time I moved. I knew it would be impossible to take the dress off without Anna's help, but taking it off was the last thing on my mind right now. I took a few steps away from the mirror just to experience the pleasure of movement, only to return a few seconds later for another look. Sit down, Anna finally spoke. Huh? I turned to face her. Sit down, just on the floor there. You'll love it. Anna took the bouquet from me and held my hand as I slowly knelt down onto the floor. I let out a scream of excitement as the dress quickly consumed me, the tulle skirt surrounding me in a sea of whiteness. Anna giggled as she held out her hand again to help me up. Well, what do you think? I don't know what to say. I look amazing and I feel unbelievable. Thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure. To be honest I thought I could make you look good, but I didn't think you'd look this good. You make such a beautiful woman, you really do. Thanks, I blushed a little at the compliment. You won't tell mom. Will you? Oh, if she could see you now. She would absolutely freak, you know that right? Anna was teasing, but she was probably right in what she said. I won't tell her, course I won't. This afternoon can be our little secret. I do want to take some more photos though, to add to my little collection. Okay, sure. I smiled. Where would you like me to stand? Outside. Anna what? I smiled but nervously this time. Outside. It's a nice day out there, I'll take your picture in the garden. No one will see you, and it will make for a beautiful picture, better than standing in the bedroom, don't you think? I guess so. But. I suddenly had a vision of my friends coming round to meet me, or Kelly turning up, or worse of all, mom and dad coming home early from their trip. I had no idea how I could possibly explain any of this to any of them if they were to see me standing in the garden dressed as a bride. But nothing. Come on. I'm not going to help you out of the dress until I get my picture, and I want to take the picture in the garden. Anna gave me back the bouquet and opened the bedroom door. 
You go first, be careful on the stairs with your dress, walk slowly and I'll hold up your skirt from behind, like I'm your bridesmaid. And with that the decision was made, I was going outside. I took a deep breath, picked up the corner of my dress once again and carefully made my way out of the bedroom and down the stairs. Once I had successfully navigated the stairs, the walk through the house to the back garden was an exciting one. The way my dress swished and swayed with each step I took was a delight, and as I took my first tentative step outside, the dress sparked as it caught the sunlight. It was warm and sunny but with a light, pleasant breeze, Anna was right behind me and ensured that I continued my walk across the garden and wasn't tempted to run back inside. When I got to the bottom of the garden, I executed a perfect half-twirl and turned to face my sister. I couldn't help but smile, and neither could she. My nervousness for being out of the house had quickly disappeared, it actually felt quite liberating being outside. Okay, so now where would you like me to stand? Hmm, how about you stand over by that tree? Anna pointed towards one of the larger trees in our garden. I have no idea what type of tree it was, but it was a good-looking tree for sure. I shuffled myself into position and held my bouquet in two hands in front of me. I took a deep breath and smiled for the camera. Hmm. Anna took a couple of pictures but didn't seem overly impressed. What's wrong? I asked. Is the picture no good? It's fine but… I want to take one on my proper camera, this phone can only do so much. You wait here, I'll go and get it. Without another word, Anna had run off back to the house, leaving me on my own by the tree. Suddenly I felt nervous again, I felt more exposed, I had lost the comfort of having my sister stood beside me. I still had just as much chance of being caught, but at least if it were to happen whilst she was there, she could potentially help with the explanation. I stood still for a moment and listened to the bird song. I enjoyed the sunshine and the light breeze which would occasionally pick up just enough to ruffle my skirt a little. A few minutes later Anna still hadn't returned so rather than just continue to wait for her by the tree, I decided to go for a little wander. I didn't go far, only a dozen or so steps to the very bottom of the garden where we had a white painted wooden bench, surrounded by a decorative floral display. I brushed away a couple of stray leaves and carefully sat down. Immediately my dress puffed up around me, as it had done in the bedroom earlier. I let out a giggle of delight as I battled against the tool, pushing it back down and placing my hands and my bouquet on my lap. I crossed my legs, although you would never have known, them being hidden by so much skirt. I sat on my own, happy and content. Anna was taking her time finding her camera, but I really didn't care anymore. Finally, almost five minutes later, Anna returned with her camera. Well, don't you look adorable? Seriously stunning Nat, I love what you've done with the bench there. There wasn't room for Anna to sit with me on the bench, so she perched on one of the arms, and while she was there she adjusted my veil slightly. Are you not going to take another picture? Oh, I will in a minute. But I did take a few just then. Did you not see me at the window? I got some of you walking to the bench, and then your beautiful sitting down routine, it was just fabulous. Thank you, I blushed a little, but I couldn't help but smile also. Anna stood up again and immediately began taking photos of me on the bench. I didn't realize at first, but we were recreating mom's favorite wedding picture, the one of her on the very same bench in our back garden, surrounded by flowers. I felt like a princess, being fussed over on her wedding day. I loved it. A couple of minutes later, and after taking two dozen or so photographs of me sitting on the bench from every conceivable angle, Anna took a step back, she had another huge grin on her face. What? I asked, curiously. I've just had an idea. I won't be long, wait here. Without giving me chance for reply, Anna left me again, running back into the house. I adjusted my position on the bench slightly and waited. I had no idea what my sister had gone to do this time, I just hoped that whatever it was, she wouldn't be too long. It was at this point my worst nightmare began to come true. I watched in horror as a man wearing green overalls and carrying a small brown package and a clipboard walked down the path beside our house and towards the back door. He was just about to knock when he spotted me at the other end of the garden. Hello! He shouted towards me. 
I have a package for a Mrs. Amanda Fielding. There was no answer at the front door so I came round, without any kind of an invitation to do so. He began walking across the lawn towards me, holding out the package. I said nothing and my cheeks began to glow red. A few seconds later he was stood right in front of me. Mrs. Fielding? Can I have a signature? Amanda Fielding was my mom. Whether he really thought I was her, I don't know. He obviously felt a little awkward too as he made no reference to the fact I was sat in the garden wearing a wedding dress. He just wanted a signature so he could be on his way. With a somewhat shaky hand I signed his clipboard and took the package from him. I forced a smile but didn't manage to say anything. Thank you. The man smiled. I have to say, you look incredible. Your dress is very beautiful. Have a nice day, ma'am. And with that, he turned and headed back up the garden without looking back. I couldn't believe what had just happened. Had that actually just happened? Why couldn't he have turned up a few minutes earlier when Anna was around? After a couple of minutes I managed to calm myself down and my heart rate returned to normal. Still sat on the bench, I gazed back towards the house as I waited for Anna. I was willing her to come back soon and now was actually quite looking forward to telling her what had just happened, there was no sign of her though. A minute later my garden nightmare continued as the peace and quiet was broken by another visitor. This time it was more serious. I wanted to run away, but I couldn't. There was nowhere to go. Kui'i, is anyone there? It was Mrs. Jackson, our neighbor from next door. She was in her late sixties, retired and widowed. Mrs. Jackson, or Betty, was a lovely woman and got on really well with mom. She was always smartly dressed and regularly popped round to see us for one reason or another. My heart sank as she spotted me on the bench and began to walk towards me. Amanda? Is that you? What are you doing? I thought you were going away. It was at this point that Betty realized that the woman on the bench in a wedding dress wasn't my mom, but in fact me. Nathan? Nathan, is that you? Hi Mrs. Jackson, I could hardly speak, I was shaking. I tried to smile but I couldn't. I just came round to see if you and Anna needed anything. I promised your mom I'd pop over this afternoon, I wanted the ground to swallow me up. I could only imagine what she was thinking, and I was positive now that this was going to get back to mom and dad. Okay, well we're fine, thank you, Betty laughed, slightly awkwardly. Sorry if I'm missing something here, but why are you sat in the garden wearing your mom's wedding dress? I had nothing. I didn't know what to say or where to begin. To buy a little time I adjusted my position on the bench slightly, but that only resulted in a rather beautiful moment of wrestling as my skirt and petticoat briefly caught the breeze. I still had nothing to say. The silence was becoming deafening as my neighbor stood in front of me, puzzled look on her face, expecting an explanation. Then, amazingly, I was saved. He's doing it for me. I asked him to do it, it was Anna, she had returned at just the right moment. It then became clear where she had been all this time and what she had been doing. She had changed into her bridesmaid dress, the one she wore for her parents' wedding. It was a beautiful dress, a gorgeous deep purple color, long with off-the-shoulder straps. She had the shoes to go with it of course, silver strappy heels. I would have been envious of her had I not been sat there wearing an even more spectacular dress. Betty turned to face my sister. She had a stunned look on her face. Suddenly she was the one who was speechless. Anna? So this is all your idea? It is, yes. It was my idea, there was no room to sit down but Anna came over and stood close to me, she held out her hand and took mine in hers. This small gesture was incredibly comforting. Okay, well would you like to explain? Betty was still confused. Anna looked at me for a moment, she was clearly trying to buy some time as she thought of an explanation. She smiled at me, I smiled back. I'm doing a project, for college. It's photography, she blurted out. A project? Yes. I need to recreate a photograph which means something to me, using a different camera and a different subject. Oh, 
I see, the picture of mom sat on the bench in her wedding dress is one of her favorites from the wedding, and it's one of mine too. You know the picture, right? It's in our front room, yes, I know the one you mean. So you're recreating your mom's wedding pictures, using Nathan instead of your mom? Yes, that's pretty much it. Anna smiled. To be fair to her she had sounded quite convincing in her story. I still wasn't sure if our friend and neighbor had bought it though. And were you hoping to be in the photograph too? As you're wearing your bridesmaid dress, oh, no, that's just for a bit of fun. Nat didn't know I was going to do that, I went back inside to change just now. I see. Betty paused and does your mom know you're doing this? Anna went quiet for a second before answering. She couldn't lie about this part. No, she has no idea. I'm not convinced she would be overly keen on us doing this if I'm honest. I mean, she wouldn't let me try the dress on when I asked a few weeks ago, so I doubt she would have wanted Nat to try it on. I said nothing but I caught my sister's glance and stared at her. I had just presumed that she had worn the dress at some point too, that she had experienced the same thrills and delights that I had experienced this afternoon. I wanted to be angry at her, but I couldn't. You won't tell her, will you? I turned to Betty and pleaded. Betty looked at us both for a moment before a smile slowly spread across her face. Of course not, Nathan. I think it's sweet you're helping your sister out with her project like this, admittedly it's a slightly strange thing to do. I'm sure your mom wouldn't have minded really, but perhaps you should have asked her first. But you're not doing any harm, in fact you look like you're having a wonderful afternoon. You do look quite fantastic Nathan, you really do look make a beautiful bride, just like your mother did on her wedding day. Thank you I replied. I felt much more comfortable now that I knew I had Betty's acceptance of the situation and that she wasn't going to tell mom about what I had been doing while she and dad were away. I had been sat down on the bench for a little while now so felt the need to move. Standing up, I took a step towards Betty and my sister and in doing so, revealed the full splendor of my dress once again. There was another gorgeous swish as my skirt and petticoat fell into place, and the bodice sparkled again as it caught the sunshine. Wow. Nathan, you look like a princess. Betty's smile was genuine. She then turned to my sister. You'll let me know how your project goes, won't you Anna? I'd love to see your photographs Betty added. Of course, I'll come round with them sometime. Anna okay, well I'll leave you both to it then. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon Nathan. And with that, she was gone, leaving Anna and me to digest what had just happened. Oh my god! As if Mrs. Jackson saw you like that. Anna fell into a fit of giggles. I know! It's worse than that though. Before she came round, some delivery guy made me sign for a package. No friggin' way! He thought I was mom. That's amazing. This is the best day ever. My sister was right, it was the best day ever. The embarrassments of the delivery man and then Mrs. Jackson seeing me were a small price to pay for everything else I had experienced that day. Little did I know, however, that as I stood in the garden and practiced my twirls and curtsies, there was one final surprise on its way to me. Let me take a few more photos then we'll go back inside. Anna's enthusiasm was back, and now that the panic of my two surprise visitors was over, so was mine. How about you get one of me throwing the bouquet? or at least pretending to throw it. I turned around and got into my best bouquet throwing position. Yes, perfect. Anna quickly took half a dozen pictures before retreating a few steps backwards up the garden. Nat, I've got an idea, I can make a short video. Start where you are now, then slowly turn around and walk towards me, like you're walking up the aisle. Okay, yes, let's do it. I took a deep breath and waited for my cue. Three, two, one, and go. I paused for a moment for added effect, then slowly turned around to face the camera, holding my bouquet in two hands out in front of me. I paused again for a further second before beginning my slow and beautiful walk up the garden. In my head I could hear the music, I was really walking up the aisle in my beautiful white dress, it was my special moment. Then I looked up, beyond Anna and her camera. I stopped walking and dropped my bouquet to the ground. Nat? 
What's wrong? Anna stopped recording her video. Nat? Is that you? Oh my god! It was Kelly. Anna turned round, nearly dropping the camera when she saw Kelly standing there. This time she had nothing to say, no explanation, she knew the whole coursework story wasn't going to work this time. Hey, Kel she muttered through a forced smile. Hey, Anna, Kelly replied politely. But her attention was very much still on me. She slowly walked towards me but I stood still, and quiet. This was the end of our relationship, I was sure of it. When she got to me, she didn't say anything, instead she picked up my bouquet from the ground and gave it back to me. She looked closely at my dress, like she was inspecting it almost. She ran her hand gently and slowly across my skirt and adjusted my veil slightly. Then she took a step back. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I finally managed to speak. Sorry? What for? Nat, you look fucking incredible. Like, seriously good. You look like a woman, the perfect blushing bride, a beautiful princess, you totally pull this off. Nat, this is so hot. I was stunned, I had not expected this reaction at all. Really? Yes, really. I knew you had it in you to do something huge like this, but I didn't think you'd go this far. And to have your sister play along with it all too, it's amazing. I guess, he wore my prom dress earlier as well, looked gorgeous in that too. Anna joined the two of us again. Oh, I bet he did. I have to see those pictures Kelly shared a giggle with Anna. So whose idea was this exactly? It was all your idea, wasn't it Nat? Anna looked at me. There was no point in arguing with her as I knew I wouldn't win, so I nodded my head in agreement. Yes, it was. Oh my god, Nat I love you. Kelly threw open her arms and wrapped them around me, which was a bit of a challenge considering the size of my dress, but she managed it. I returned the hug and closed my eyes. It was such a beautiful moment, I felt like I wanted to cry. But, conscious of my makeup I held in the tears. A few moments later, when the hug had taken its course, we smiled at each other and I took my hand in hers. Come on, let's go inside. And with that Kelly lead my slowly across the garden and back to the house. Anna stayed behind a little longer, I didn't know it at the time but she was taking one final video of me as I made my departure. Kelly was in a fit of giggles as she followed me on the stairs, holding up the back of my skirt as I carefully took each step. Finally we both made it to the top and went straight into my bedroom where I fell backwards onto my bed with a playful scream. Kelly closed the door and soon joined me on the bed in the sea of white tulle. She carefully removed my tiara so avoid any damage to it and then kissed me gently on the lips. We then lay down together, our heads sharing a pillow. I held my right hand in her left, and with our others we couldn't help but gently touch and stroke the puffed up skirt, selecting a small delicate section and raising it for a moment to then let it float back down again. Each time we did this a small shiver ran across my body, it was the most amazing feeling. We lay together for a couple of hours as the sun went down outside the window, we held each other and smiled at each other, it was perfect. But finally the time came to take off the dress. I was reluctant to do it at first as it felt like the end of my wonderful dream, but in reality it was the start of a new one. Having Kelly there with me, it was almost like it was our wedding night, I was with the woman I loved, and so was she. I needed her help to get out of the dress and as she slowly undid the fastenings, I carefully stepped out of all the layers of tulle, the dress, and then the petticoat, revealing to her what I was wearing underneath. Wow, this just gets better and better. Kelly took a step back and admired me once again, this time it was my underwear and bra which made her excited. I held my hand behind my back and attempted to reach the clasp of my bra, but I couldn't quite get to it. Will you give me a hand with this? No, leave it on. I've got an idea, don't move, and with that Kelly disappeared out of the room. I knew where she had gone to, she had gone to my sister's room next door, Anna was back in there by now editing her pictures. A couple of minutes later she returned holding a knee-length baby blue silk nightgown. Here, put this on, your sister says she's never worn it, you can keep it. She passed me the gown, it was so delicate and beautiful, even just holding it in my hands gave me goosebumps. 
I turned away from Kelly for a moment and slipped it over my head, allowing it to fall effortlessly over my body. I turned back to face her, she said nothing but smiled, I knew she approved. Between us we then placed my wedding dress onto a hanger and hung it up on the outside of my closet for us to look at and admire. It was equally as stunning on the hanger as it was when worn. Kelly then stripped off to her underwear and joined me in bed. It was the most amazing end to the most incredible day. The next morning I woke up in Kelly arms. I wondered if the whole of the previous day had been one long dream, but then I looked over towards the closet and saw the dress still hanging there. I then realized I was still wearing the nightgown, confirming it had not been a dream at all, it had all been real. Morning princess. Kelly opened her eyes and immediately kissed me. Morning, I smiled back. God, that dress is beautiful. Kelly stared over towards the closet, although it was hard not to notice it as it was dominating the room even when only hanging up. I know, I still can't believe what happened yesterday, me neither. So glad I turned up when I did. So am I. I smiled and kissed Kelly again. So what are you going to wear today? I think you should wear a nice summer dress, or a long skirt. I'll do your nails too, if you like, and your eyebrows. What do you say? Perhaps. I suddenly became nervous and overwhelmed by the situation, and as a result my reply was less than enthusiastic, it was followed by a long silence from the both of us. Nat, I've been thinking. Truth be told I couldn't sleep last night, I was thinking about it so much. Kelly sat up in the bed and waited for me to do the same. Just hear me out, before you say anything, okay? Okay you should be a woman, all the time. Do the hormones, surgery, whatever it takes. I saw how happy and comfortable you were yesterday, not just out in the garden, your sister showed me the photographs too, of the prom dress and the fancy skirt. I've never seen you so confident. It's like you've been waiting your whole life for a release, and yesterday was it. This is who you are supposed to be, I'm sure of it. Don't be Nathan anymore, B. Natasha. I was speechless. I was utterly stunned by Kelly's suggestion and had no response to it. Look, Kelly took my hand in hers. I know it's a huge thing to do but I will support you every step of the way, with whatever you choose to do, everyone will. I love you so much, and seeing you so happy yesterday, I want you to be that happy all the time, you deserve it. I know it's scary but we can take it slow, it won't be all at once but I know you can do it. Kelly leaned in and gave me another kiss, this time on the cheek. So, what do you think? What do you think? It was like she had just asked me what I wanted for breakfast, but in reality she had just turned my life upside down. I had no idea how to react or what to say. Was this a joke? Was she actually serious? I closed my eyes and began to blush. A thousand thoughts were flying through my mind and I didn't know what to do. Kelly hugged me and I opened my eyes again. Nat, it's okay. I know it's a huge thing I'm asking. Take your time. Kelly smiled at me with her gorgeous smile, it was one of my favorite things in the world. Another minute passed and I still hadn't said anything. Come on Nat, tell me I'm wrong. She winked at me. She knew she was right, and deep down, so did I. Today is the fourth anniversary of the best day of my life. An innocent trip to see my sister in her bedroom one Saturday afternoon changed my life in a way I could never have imagined. Kelly was right, it was just meant to be. My mom quickly found out that I had worn her wedding dress that day, but she didn't seem to mind all that much, not when she realized how wearing it had allowed me to find my true self and bring Natasha into the world. Yes, I am Natasha now, although people still call me Nat for short. I shocked a lot of people when I announced I wanted to have the surgery and become a woman, but that's exactly what I have done, I had my final operation on my 22nd birthday just a few weeks ago. It's not been easy getting where I am today but with all the support I have had, particularly from my sister Anna and my girlfriend Kelly, I always knew things would turn out okay in the end. Except this is not the end, it's very much the beginning, and Kelly isn't my girlfriend anymore, she's my fiancé. She promised me that once I was through my operations she would give me the wedding of my dreams, so I can walk down the aisle for real this time. 
We have already started our preparations and plan on getting married this time next year. I will never forget the day it all began, and the wonderful experience I had being transformed by my sister into a beautiful bride. It was the day I discovered who I really was and what I was meant to be. It was the day that I started my amazing journey to become the woman I am today.